today I'm going to show you how to add fractions. Remember, before you can add fractions, you have to have the same number underneath. You have to have what we call the common denominator. So in the first question, to find the common denominator, we have to find a number that both 4 and 3 fit into exactly. So, it's better if you can find something called the lowest common multiple. So that means the smallest number that both 4 and 3 fit into, because it means you'll do less simplifying later on. But it doesn't matter if you don't get the lowest common multiple, as long as it's a number that both 4 and 3 fit into exactly. Remember, it just means you might have to do some extra simplifying afterwards. Okay, so the lowest common multiple of 4 and 3 is 12. Okay, it's the smallest number that both 4 and 3 fit into exactly. Okay, so we're not allowed to just change the denominator and keep it the same fraction with 1 and 2 on the top. We have to change the numerators as well in order to find something called the equivalent fraction. So let's look at the first fraction. So to get from 4 to 12, I multiplied that number by 3. So I must do the same thing with the numerator on top. So I'm also going to multiply that number 1 by 3. So 1 multiplied by 3 is 3. So I found the equivalent fraction of 1 quarter. Okay, so this is 1 quarter as well. It's just writing it in a different format so that we can add the fractions afterwards. Okay, now for the next part. To get from 3 to 12, I multiply by, I'll use a different colour there so you can see, I multiply by 4. So we have to do the same thing with the numerator up here. So I'm also going to multiply this 2 by 4. So 2 multiplied by 4 is 8. Okay, now that I've got common denominators, I'm allowed to add these two fractions together. So when I add the two fractions together, the denominator doesn't change. Okay, do not do 12 plus 12, it stays the same. So it's only the top two numbers, 3 and 8, that we're adding together. So 3 plus 8 is 11. Okay, so that's the first question. Alright, on to the next one. So again, we can't add these two fractions because they've got different denominators. So I need to find the lowest common multiple of 7 and 3. So the smallest number that both 7 and 3 fit into exactly is 21. Okay, so now I'm going to find the equivalent fractions. To get from 7 to 21, I know I have to multiply by 3. So I'm going to do the same with the numerator of this fraction, and I'm going to multiply that 6 by 3. So 6 multiplied by 3 is 18. So I found my first equivalent fraction. Now for the second one. To get from 3 to 21, I must multiply by 7. So I have to do the same with the top number, this numerator here, 1. So I'm going to multiply that number 1 by 7. So 1 times 7 is 7. Okay, so now I've got my common denominators, I can add the fractions together. Remember, the denominator stays the same, it's the numerators that we add together. So 18 plus 7 is 25. Okay, so that's my final answer. I can't simplify this fraction. I could, however, write it as a mixed number. So if you want to have a go at writing it as a mixed number, how many times does 21 go into 25? It goes in exactly once, and we have a remainder of 4. So that goes on top. Okay, if you're not sure how to change improper fractions into mixed numbers, then you can check out my other video which explains how to do that. Okay, now, the third example. So we've got three fractions to think about this time. So this time I need to find a common denominator, a number that fits all of these in exactly. So 3, 2 and 4 have to fit into this number exactly. So if you're good at your times tables, it shouldn't take you too long to find one of those numbers. The smallest one here would be 12. That's the lowest common multiple of 3, 2 and 4. All of those numbers fit exactly into 12. So now we're going to find the equivalent fractions. So to get from this first fraction to here, I have to multiply that one by 4. So I'm going to do the same with the top one. So I'm going to multiply this number by 4 as well. Okay, the second fraction. To get from 2 
to 12, I must multiply by 6. So I do the same with the numerator and I multiply by 6. So 1 times 6 is 6. Okay, and now the last fraction here. To get from 4 to 12, I have to multiply by 3. So I'm going to do the same with the numerator and I'm going to multiply by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. Now that I've got common denominators, I can add all three fractions together. Remember, the denominator stays the same, it's just the numerators that we're adding together. So 4 plus 6 plus 3 gives me 13. And I can't simplify the fraction. If you want to turn it into a mixed number, then how many 12s in 13? 1. And there's a remainder of 1. Okay? So either of those answers are acceptable, although sometimes in your exam questions they might ask you to write your final answer as a mixed number. So this is useful to know. Alright, now, the last one. So when we're adding these fractions together, it's a good idea to turn this one into what we call an improper fraction. Now you don't have to, there is another method, but I think it's quite useful to remember to do it this way because when we're multiplying and dividing, that's the method we have to use as well. So as soon as you see a mixed number, turn that into an improper fraction. So, if you don't know how to turn mixed numbers into improper fractions, then you can check out the other video. So I'm just assuming when I do this one that you know how to do it. So remember, the denominator is the same. And to find the numerator, you multiply these together and you add this one here. So this one, as an improper fraction, is 9 quarters. This one we don't need to change, this one's fine. Okay, so I've done my first step. Now I'm going to do like I did in my other examples. I'm going to find the common denominator. So the lowest common multiple of 4 and 7, the smallest number that fits 4 and 7 into, is 28. Okay, now I'm going to find the equivalent fractions. So to get from 4 to 28, I multiply by 7. So I also multiply this numerator 9 by 7 as well. So 9 multiplied by 7 is 63. Now for the second fraction, to get from 7 to 28, I must multiply by 4. So I do the same with the numerator. So 6 multiplied by 4 is 24. Okay, now I can add the fractions together. Remember, the denominator stays the same. And then when I add these numerators together, 63 plus 24 gives me 85. And I can't simplify that fraction, so that one's done. Okay, so the better you get at adding these fractions, the less likely you are to have all these arrows and lines all over the place. Um, I hope that wasn't too confusing for you and my next video will be on subtracting fractions which is very similar to this. Okay, 